What's up guys, in this video we're going to be continuing our Tycoon series right here. This video is going to be all about our droppers and conveyor belts, so that's what we're going to be getting into right now. In order to start, let's go ahead and start with our conveyor belt. I'm just going to go over to the back of our Tycoon right here. I'm going to insert a brand new part by clicking on this button right up here. Now I'm going to grab this, press Ctrl 3 or just click on the scale tool right here. And then you can go ahead and scale this to whatever size you want it to be. I'm going to make this a pretty big conveyor belt, something like this. And I'm also going to scale it down on the top, just so it's pretty thin as well. Next, you can feel free to change the color to whatever color you'd like to. I'm going to choose a nice gray like this. And then we want to make sure that our part is anchored. Now, what we need to do is add in a script to our conveyor belt. So let's go ahead and click on the plus icon to the right of our part right here and add in a script. This script I'm going to rename to conveyor script, but you can name it whatever you'd like to because it does not really matter. Conveyor belts are extremely simple. All we need to do is say script.parent.velocity will be equal to vector3.new and then I believe it's going to be 10 on the x and 0 and 0. So it'll be 10 on the x axis, 0 on the y axis, and then 0 on the z axis as well. Let's go ahead and test this and make sure that it is on the right axis. If it's on the right axis, you should see that you should be going with the conveyor belt in the direction that you want to go. If you're moving like this way, instead of the way you want to be going, that means you're on the wrong axis, you need to change up a few things. Another thing to keep in mind is that inside of our conveyor script again, the higher you turn this number up to, the faster the conveyor belt's going to go. I'm going to keep this at about 15 though, because I think that is a good speed. Anyways, that's about it for our conveyor belt right here, so let's go ahead and close the script, and let's rename this one to conveyor belt, and let's go ahead, throw it into our tycoon inside of our main items folder right here. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and want to do is create a dropper for our tycoon. So now if you've got a unique tycoon idea, I'm just going to throw some random ideas out there like let's say strawberry tycoon or something. You could have a special strawberry dropper that will drop your parts for you. So what I'm saying here is that you want to be unique with the way your tycoon goes because the more unique you are with it, the more it's going to stand out from the rest of them. So keep that in mind while you're making your droppers. However, I'm just going to make a very simple dropper right here. It is going to be just basically a square. It's going to go up a bit just like this. I'm going to duplicate this part, move it around, put this up. Now how your dropper looks does not matter in the slightest. All that really matters is that it has this little long, actually it doesn't even need this long thing. All we're going to need is a little part right here that we're going to stick right about here or so. So this is where we're going to be our parts are going to be dropping from. I'm actually going to scale this dropper down a little bit just because of how huge it is. But yeah, you basically just want to have your dropper be over the conveyor belt and we want to have this part right here be on top of our conveyor belt somewhere where it's going to be basically kind of hidden almost if you think about it like that you can put this anywhere you want to because it's just going to be transparent anyways we want to turn the transparency all the way up to one so that no one can see it and then we want to make sure this is anchored as well so now we have our dropper if we grab our invisible part Let's name this one to Spawner, and these two other parts I'm going to go ahead and group as a model. So if you right click the two parts, and I'm actually going to group these as a folder here. I'm going to name this one to Build, and I'm going to grab our Build folder and our Spawner. I'm going to group that as a model. I'm going to name this one to our Dropper, just like that. So now I've got our Build. Those are the things that don't really matter, but we do want to make sure that they're still anchored. So we make sure these are anchored. Now we have our spawner right here that is going to be very important. Another thing with the spawner is that we want to make sure that can collide is turned off. I'm also going to move it down a little bit so that no parts get stuck inside of our little dropper thing right here. So that is pretty much our dropper for now. The thing that we're going to want to do though is customize our part. There's a cool thing that I saw in another tycoon, I forgot which tycoon it was, but it's something that I kind of want to replicate today. So with their tycoon, they had a part, it was just your classic normal part, like this, 
I think the size was 1 comma 1 comma 1, just your very simple tycoon park, but they had a little billboard GUI inside of it that kind of told you how much cash it was worth. So what we're going to do is inside of this park, we're going to add in a billboard GUI just like this. And inside of this billboard GUI, we're going to add a frame. As you can see, if you go out a little bit, you can see that our frame is now inside of our little part here. And then with this billboard GUI, I'm going to increase the size up to about something huge. Let's do like 5 comma 0 comma 5 comma 0. So that takes up a lot of space. And then we want to turn down the max distance from infinite down to something like 40, just like that. So that way we can still see it from pretty far away, but not far enough away that it just goes on infinitely. Now as for our frame, we want to make the size about a 1 comma 0 comma 0 0.2 comma 0. So that takes up pretty much just the top bar like that. And then we want to set the background transparency of this frame all the way up to 1. And then we can add in a text label right here. This text label, I'm also going to set the background transparency up to 1. The size, we're going to make up to 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 just like that. And then down the text properties, we can turn on text scaled. We can change our text color. We can change the font. And then inside of our text label here, I'm going to add in a UI stroke so we get that nice outline around it. So here is our part like that. And we're basically going to be changing this so that it'll display however much this part is worth. So it'll basically say like a uh, dollar sign, let's say $5 or something, and it's gonna say cash, you know, something like that as it goes down the conveyor belt, just as a little unique way of telling the player that this is how much that dropper thing is worth. You can also make the text color to green, I guess, for a more satisfying kind of cash color. But yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we can take our billboard GUI and throw it into replicated storage for now because we're gonna be using that. Now with our part here, we can get rid of that. For our dropper, we're going to add in a script inside of our dropper model, and we can name this script to our dropper script. Now there are a few things that we need to get inside of our tycoon, such as the dropper parts folder. So we're going to say local dropper parts folder will be equal to our game. Actually, let's get our tycoon model first. So let's drop the dropper into our purchased items folder right there. And up here a bit, we're going to say local tycoon will be equal to our script.parent.parent for our tycoon model right here. And then for our dropper parts folder, we can say tycoon, find first child. We need to go one more dot parent right here. And this will be our dropper parts folder just like that. Alrighty, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and want to do is that we're going to go ahead and want to get our values inside of our values folder. So the first one we're going to want is our drop color value, which will be equal to our tycoon find first child values dot and this will be our drop color value just like that that we're going to be changing through our colorizer. Next we're going to get our material value. So local material value will be equal to tycoon find first child values dot material value, just like that. Now we can set up a loop. So we're going to say while wait something like three seconds, we're going to go ahead and do this. So this is where we're going to go ahead and create our loop for our part. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is up here before our loop real quick is that we're going to go ahead and say our local billboard GUI will be equal to game.replicated storage find first child billboard GUI just like that. Now up at the top of our loop here, we're going to say local clone GUI will be equal to our billboard GUI clone just like that. Now we're going to need to create our part. So this will be equal to our instance.new. It's going to be a part just like that. And then we're going to parent it to our dropper parts folder. Now we get to customize our part. So the part we were messing around with. So that part size was equal just to 1 comma 1 comma 1. So this one will be as well. Vector 3.new 1 comma 1 comma 1 just like that. Then we can go ahead and say part.name will be equal to dropper part just like that. And then we'll grab our clone GUI.parent will be equal to part. Now we need to go ahead and create a value. Actually, before we go ahead and parent this clone GUI to the part, we're going to create our value first. 
So our local cache value will be equal to an instance dot new int value that we're also going to parent to the part like that. Our cache value dot value is going to be equal to about five. And then our cache value dot name is going to be cache value just like that. Now we have our cache value inside of there. We're going to grab our clone GUI dot parent, parent that to the part. We're going to say clone GUI dot frame dot text label dot text will be equal to we'll have our dollar sign right here then we're going to do dot dot cache value dot value dot dot and then cache just like this with an extra space before the cache value dot value and our cache right here so now this should be perfect and now all we need to do is say game dot workspace so now all we need to do is say game.debris, we're going to add item, it's going to be part, and then we're going to give it about, let's say, 10 seconds before it gets removed, actually 15. So what this part down here is doing is that if our part doesn't reach the cache collector in 15 seconds, it's basically going to remove that part so that it doesn't cause lag. So say a part got flung off the conveyor belt somehow, this is basically going to get rid of that part after a certain amount of time so that it doesn't lag after a while. Up here are all of our variables that we got from our tycoon and even our billboard GUI. This is a simple loop that's going to happen every 3 seconds, we're basically going to clone our billboard GUI. Then we're going to make a new part, we're setting its size and everything. And then we're making a new cache value inside of the part that we're going to use to determine how much that drop is worth and then we're basically just changing the clone GUI's text to however much cash that cash value is worth. The next thing that we're going to want to do is also up here just say part dot color well dot brick color will be equal to our drop color value and then our part dot material will be equal to our material value dot value and our drop color dot value as well. Now as for our material value, we want to just write plastic right here, and let's go ahead and test it. If we click on play here, so that is one thing I made a mistake on is that we weren't actually setting the C-frame of our part at all. So if we go back into our dropper script here, is that we need to say part.cframe will be equal equal, well not equal equal, but will be equal to script.parent.spawner.cframe, just like that. So now we can click on play. So as you can see, just like that, our dropper is now dropping the cache. Our little parts have our cache thing above them, and they're going across this conveyor belt just like that. And as you can see, after the 15 seconds are up, you can see they're now disappearing because we don't actually have the cache collector just yet. However, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Anyways, see you guys next time. Goodbye.